Okay, this video is going to cover equations vocabulary. These are some important words you need to understand before you really dig in deep into the equations unit. And these words, some of them you might have seen before, but here's, here they are. Equation, inequality, expression, term, constant, variable, and coefficient. So these are the words you need to know. Some of them you might have heard before and some of them might be brand new. Here we go. So there's three types of math statements. The three types of math statements are equation, inequality, and expression. The real definition of an equation is going to be that it always has an equal sign. It's a statement of balance. And an example of that is to say that 5n plus 3 equals negative 3. If you were to visualize a seesaw, this would be one side and it would be balanced with this side. We're going to have other videos talking about balanced equations and what they might look like. Our next type of math statement is inequality. Inequality is going to always have an inequality sign. That's one of those greater than or less than signs. And it's a statement of imbalance. It's stating something's larger or smaller than something else. And an example would be to have 3m minus 4 is greater than 6. So it's not saying they're equal. It's not saying they're balanced. They're saying this is more than this. Finally, we have expressions. Expressions are going to have terms and operations. You're going to have some numbers and some operations. It's not going to say it's equal to anything. It's not going to say it's greater than or less than anything. And an example would be 5a plus 3b minus 8. And that's an expression. So we're going to go ahead and quickly review over this. 5n plus 3. What you can do is pause and then name it yourself if you want. 5n plus 3, that would be considered a variable expression. It has a variable in it because a variable, as we're going to learn, is a letter that represents an unknown number. This next one would be considered a variable equation. It has an equal sign and variables. Our next one there's no variables involved, so it's going to be considered a numerical expression. There's no equal sign. There's no inequality sign. Numerical expression. This one would be considered a variable inequality. It has a variable. It has an inequality sign. Our next one would also be a variable inequality. This is a less than or equal to symbol. It's still considered an inequality and there's a variable. Finally we have this one. It's a little different from the others in fact that there's some numbers over here and some numbers over here. There's an equal sign so it's gonna and there's variables. It's gonna be a variable equation. So now we're gonna get into the parts of these math statements. So the first thing we're going to talk about is terms. Terms can be numbers, variables, a product, or a quotient in a math statement. So I'm going to give you a large math statement here. We've got all sorts of things going on. These are all terms, though. Some kids might count the 5 and the n as a separate term. Be real careful. Pay attention to what we're about to do. So we have numbers. We have numbers by themselves. I've got this. Notice how I'm including the sign in front of it. Uh, any other numbers by themselves, there you go. Variables. Variables by themselves. There's a variable by itself. There's a variable by itself. Notice how I'm including the negative sign in front of it. That'll come in handy later on. Products mean things that are being multiplied. Products are things being multiplied. So this 5 times n, 5n means 5 times this mystery number n. We also have negative 4m. Notice I'm including the sign in front of it again. And that's it for products. Finally, quotients means things being divided. So we have this a divided by 7. So I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this equation has 7 terms. 
seven terms in the equation. We're moving on. We're going to talk about these statements and how many terms. So this first one, let's see, is this an equation, an inequality, or an expression? I see an equal sign, so it's an equation. And then I see how many terms? I see this, this. There are four terms. So we'll try another one here. So this, some kind of statement, has how many terms? I don't see an equal sign. I don't see an inequality. This would be considered an expression. And there are one, two, three terms. Finally, we'll do one more. We have this a plus b is less than 5. As soon as I see the less than symbol, that means it's an inequality. And I see 1, 2, and 3 terms. Two variables by themselves, and then a number over here by itself. So we've talked about terms. Now we're going to talk about types of terms. First type of term we're going to deal with is a constant. A constant is a number that's alone. It's by itself. It's usually being added or subtracted. So in this statement here, we have a constant here, a constant here, and then over on the other side, we have a constant here. I see an equal sign, so this equation, the constants in this equation are negative 5, 8, and negative 3. So those are your three constants. Yeah, there's a 6. Yeah, there's a negative 2. But those aren't numbers by themselves. They're multiplying by the variable. We're going to talk about what they are in a minute. So now we're going to look at a math statement and name the constants. So we have this math statement. And we're going to look for constants. There's a constant. There's a constant. There's a constant. So the constants in this expression are 4, negative 8, and 9. Once again, you want to, if it's negative, definitely include the sign in front of it. With the positive, with the plus sign, you know it's positive, so you don't really need to write it out. But you definitely need to include any negative signs in front. We've got another statement here. The only constant I see is the 12. Now, some kids might say, oh, n's by itself. But that's a variable, that's a letter by itself. Constants are numbers that are by themselves. So 12 is the only constant in this inequality. Moving on, now we're going to get into variables. I've been using that word a lot. Some of you may already know what it is. A variable is a representing an unknown number. It can be a term by itself or part of a term as a factor. And we're going to clarify that in a moment. So we have this statement. And I see variables here, 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 and here. So our variables are, the variables in this equation are n, m, y, and x. Now I want to make sure you understand that x is the only variable here that is a term by itself. This n is part of a term. This m is part of a term. This y is part of a term. The x is the only, this single x is the only one that is a term by itself. So in this statement, we have variables that are both part of terms. So the variables in this expression are n and m. Neither of these variables would be considered terms by themselves, but they're part of two terms. So in this next one, we have two variables. We have this x and y. This y would be a term by itself. This x is part of a term. So the variables in this inequality are x and y. Coefficient. Coefficient is going to be the numerical factor in a term containing a variable. A lot of big words there. It's always going to be in front of a variable. For most of what you're going to be doing in seventh grade math, it's going to be the number in front of a variable. So our coefficients in this statement are going to be the 6. Not this negative 5. It's not attached to any variable. It's not multiplying by a variable. It's not a factor. 6 is a factor because it's multiplying by the n. Our next coefficient would be negative 2. 
and then this 8 is by itself, so that's a constant. Now, a lot of kids might say, oh, well, there isn't one in front of y, but there actually is. If you use the multiplicative identity property, you can say that there's actually, you could think of this as 1y. So a coefficient of y would be 1. So the coefficients in this equation are going to be 6, negative 2, and 1. We're going to practice identifying some coefficients. Before we do that, though, I want to make sure you understand 6 is not a term by itself. 6n is the entire term. Negative 2 is part of a term. Negative 2m is the whole term. This 1 is not a term by itself, but this 1y is the complete term. All right. We're going to name the coefficients. In here, our coefficients, there's only two of them. There's only going to be the 7 and the 6. So the coefficients in this expression are 7 and 6. Our next one. A lot of kids are going to say, oh, there's only one coefficient, which is negative 3. But if you really understand this, you're going to look and say, hey, there's something attached to this y that isn't there, but it is. It's kind of strange to say. It's like a ninja. OK, so our coefficient is negative 3 over here. Our coefficient is going to be 1. So our coefficients in this inequality are going to be negative 3 and 1. As we move forward in this equations unit, you'll understand why this 1y becomes a big deal. All right, we're going to do some review. What could this be classified as, this 8n? So we have all the words we've learned about in this video. 8n, it can't be an equation. There's no equal sign. There's no inequality sign. It is a number and an operation. We could consider it an expression. It could also be a term. This is a one-term expression. It's not a number by itself. Now, there is a variable and there is a coefficient. But by itself, it's not just a variable. It's not just a coefficient. So it's an expression and a term. You could also think of it as a one-term expression. Moving on. This one, we have negative 3. We have all these words we've learned. No equal sign, no inequality sign. It is a number and an operation. You could think of this as take away 3. You could think of it as an expression. It's a one-term expression. And that one term is known as a constant. It's not a letter by itself. It's not a letter representing an unknown. And it's not multiplying by anything. So this one could be an expression, a term, and a constant. Its most specific name would be constant. And we're going to do one more here. We have a variable by itself. No equal sign. No inequality sign. You could consider it an expression. You could consider it a term. It's not a number by itself, but it is a variable by itself. So the most specific name would be variable, but it could be these other two as well. That's about it. I hope this helps. Best of luck to you. Make sure you're paying attention in class.